Look at me. <laughs> it's just only taken 20 meetings to figure out, but you are alive, Trish. All right. Um, calling to order the meeting of the Community Services Advisory Board on September 12th at 6. And for the benefit of <clears throat> anyone who is listening um, now or the recording, everyone just go around and quickly say their name. Starting with you, Alan. Ellen Coughlin Quinn. Rick Murphy. Art Dillon. Uh, Trish Brigham. Roger Shawat. And missing um, tonight and not in attendance is our, our Emily Roder and Alex Marshall. Correct. Okay. And for anybody watching, we do have one vacancy if you want to apply. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> um, first order of business is to review and approve the minutes of the July 11th meeting. So moved. Second. Sorry. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Minutes are approved. And do we have anyone, there's no one physically present. Do we have anyone online that is? Uh, we do have one. Let me stop comment. sharing my screen. Um, we have one guest with us right now. Penny, do you have any public comments you'd like to make at this time? Well, I wanted to, I sent you an email, an email Todd, but I sent it really late. So okay. I, um, not I figured you didn't get it. So yes, I guess I would. I would like to address the issue of the fee schedule for the parking at the beaches for next year. Um, during the last meeting, one of the board members came up, suggested one flat fee for the entire day. And I brought that back to my home because my husband also works um, as the weekend supervisor at the beaches. And he spoke with residents that he regularly sees at the beaches and staff at the beaches. And we talked about it at length and everyone that he spoke to about it thought it was a great idea to have one flat fee. Right now, there are some issues created by people trying to get into the beach before nine o'clock because it's way less money. And then they're lined up waiting to get into the beach, waiting for the three o'clock and trying to get a little earlier than that. Um, and the people that are coming later in the day um, and waiting for three o'clock to pay $5 are the people that are usually staying till seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. And that is when a lot of issues are happening at the beach when there's no parking attendant and things. So, um, that's all. I just wanted to let you know that everybody that we've chatted with, everybody that the staff, everybody thought it was a fantastic idea. It would put us on par with the other towns around us. Um, it would be way easier functionally and operationally for the people that work the beach. I'm done. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Penny. Um, I think we had not. Oh, we do have beach fees yeah. further yeah. on. So yeah, we've got some chart. Yeah, we do you um, want to well, I guess we should stick with the yeah, agenda. I'll pull the agenda several. back up. I think yeah, we've got um the first thing we want to talk about was the ad this it seeing no other citizen comments, I'll close that section of the meeting and switch to the um item five, which is the ad hoc community center and discussion. Um and where do we go from here? Yeah. So a couple, there was a lot of emails flying and I had to take everything and I didn't do any broad kind of responses because I'm trying to figure out where my place in this as a staff person and and then also to support your action. So a couple of things that have happened since then. Um, council's obviously gone to second vote. That timeline was really quick with that first, second, third vote for process. Um, and um, everybody that's asked me, I said, you know, our advisory board has sent requests, conversations. I said, we'll have a discussion tonight about next action. Again, whatever comes needs to be community led mm -hmm. per se. Um, uh, since that point, um, and, and I appreciate their efforts, the finance committee, uh, which Karen sits on, um, has asked for projects bigger than $5 million to consider kind of where they fit in a timeline. Because again, you can't do number two if you don't do number one. And Number one is still up for grabs, right? So um, my biggest thing has always been, well, how do the finances match up? Because again, 
you can't look at the price of something and figure out how it's going to impact me because there's other things that come off the books. What's the new mill rate? What's the tax rate? What's the valuation? Way complicated than I understand. Long story short is I just watched the five o'clock finance committee because I knew they were discussing that that topic. And um, they did what they were, town gave them what they were asked. There was three projects over 5 million, school, library, community center. And so what they've asked Tom and Norm Kildow to, to said it to said, okay, model us. If we brought the community center back in June, Next and we year. June 25, and we brought the school back in fall of 25, and then brought the library back, I forget the date, but it's another time out. Model that financially for us because that at least gets some facts, right? They can say, okay, we anticipate our valuation is going to be here. We we do the vote and we, we break these bonds out over 30 years. Now you can see and take, oh, this comes off the books. This comes off the mm -hmm. books. Haggis Parkway is now off the books. Uh, is it in a TIF district? Those type of things. Because then you can really dial down to, okay, to a voter anyways. Mm -hmm. If I was going to vote for this as a resident, you know, um, it would affect me $250, $400. What does it mean to me annually? And are we willing to bring that to the ballot? So I think that for the next their next finance committee, they're going to get that that answer and then decide. Okay, do we recommend a council to put this out for us as, as a consideration? So I I appreciate them not letting it because they heard us in the sense from the advisory board that you know when they first put it, it was like FY twenty eight or thirty. Well, that information is going to be unvalid. People of interest are going to be lost interest, and so you start all over again. So you spend a hundred thousand dollars for for a conversation. So I appreciate they're at least taking the financial exercise with really what's going to make up people's mind, whether they support it or they don't. And they may support it on the bond and they may not support it in the ballot box. What does or, that mean? Like I, as a counselor, as a staff person, you guys may say, I want to see the community vote on it. But when you get in the ballot box, personally, you can make your own opinion whether you support it or not. But is it the right thing for the community at the time? That's ultimately our decision. Mm -hmm to do and then personally every voter gets their own choice what they do in the box and so again that's a hard thing to separate a lot of times for elected officials and for committee members because we want it we want it we want it but until we know what it really affects and so now they can give the finances and and we heard that right from people we were soliciting from our open houses that i support a community center but i can't vote yes until i know what it means financially so they're they're going to work on that step for us so i think by the time you guys meet again in November, they'll have their October meeting and we'll have another another place for you to potentially act. But as far as right now, it's a holding pattern. The school committee building committee two is taking up action as far as getting formed and kind of seeing where that goes. So there's a lot of things that happen, but I appreciate that at least considering down the road of the financial model. And Karen was a big advocate for driving that and, and saying that, We've done this. Why do we spend money and not do anything with it? So, like, let's at least take the next step. And so that's what they're doing. They're, yeah. not, they're not saying it's going anywhere, but at least they're answering one of the questions that always gets asked. So, great. Yeah. Two, two questions. Yeah. Um, so, is nothing on the ballot in November? So, November, there's three, ref <laughs> no, there's three ballot referendums in November. None have to do with the school or the community center. There is $6 million land bond for parks yeah. and conservation, there is a million dollar fire truck. And then I think there's just under a million dollars for body cameras for police department. Yeah, okay. Yeah, those are the three municipal referendum okay. questions. Yep. Yeah. So my next question is, and this is probably my ignorance, um, why is this approach just happening now when the town has been considering these kind of building projects for, I don't know, long before I even moved here six years ago? Why is it now, only now, that this is happening? I don't know. That's, okay. I, I can't, I think different boards, different, uh, different functions. And I think sometimes um, committees and boards think it's going to pass, you know what I mean? Or, you know, I, whether you thought the school would pass on the first time or not, most schools don't. Right. So okay. it's, there's a lot of, I guess in everybody's defense, there's a lot of capital investments that are coming. Yeah. And I think you get a little bit of paralysis do you want to because there's so much to think about but again you can't do number two and do number one and until you look at the money nothing's real because again we could you know yeah. um and with the community center and i get it 
or to join, you're going to pay again. So there's, you know, there's a double model there of, hey, I got to pay another 250 in my taxes. And for my family to go, I got to pay this a year. So there's a lot to consider. And those are big numbers, you know. Yeah. So our next step is really to wait at this point. <laughs> I think at this point, you, you've sent letters individually or yeah. as a group. Did yeah. you get any response back? I did. Okay, good. Um, and then um, I think for us right now, it's wait to see what that modeling looks like. Um, and uh, if I hear anything different, I will reach out to you, Trish and Emily, to be for the board. Because I think sometimes when like we'll see if we get pushback from people like, why are we doing this or why are we not? I think encouragement that we're going down this path. Thank you for at least listening. Okay. Those types of positive, they, yeah. they always get negative. So sometimes a positive email. Do you was, think it's appropriate for us to do that now? Because I was fair. I mean, I was polite, but yep. I was fairly like, come on, you paid kind of went down the same road as you. We paid this money. Yeah. And you're going to start losing face right. if you don't do anything. Uh, I always like to say thank you when I think things are moving in the right direction. Okay. You know what I mean? So I will leave that up to you guys as a board to decide what you do individually or as a as a board. But I think sometimes hearing thank you goes a long way. Of, thanks yep. for listening. Well, let me cut in and say thank you, because <laughs> in the last two years, we have seen a tremendous amount of progress on a community center yeah. <clears throat> by leaps and bounds ahead of what we've been able to do in the past. And it's not the first attempt, but this has gone very far down the process. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, you know, we've done a lot of work has been done. And Todd, I, you know, I Defense. believe you deserve a lot of credit yeah. for Defense taking great committees too, then, what uh, what the what what we think is the wish of the community and and running it out because mm -hmm. I think that's our duty to do that. Yeah. So I would yeah. not be discouraged. It's highly nobody knows what will happen in an election, but Art was right when he said it may not look like what we have envisioned so far. It might be done in phases. It might yeah. stop with the pool. Yeah. And it may end up with a rec plex someplace. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But don't underestimate the amount of progress that has been made. I believe this discussed hate discussion about a community center started in 1975. That I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 the timeline. I think oh my was. gosh. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for that perspective. Yeah. 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 Wow. So oh where would when would we decide if it's gonna be in pieces, like start with the pool and then well, I think that? so that what that is that hasn't been decided. No. I'm suggesting that it might be a possibility. It like might, if this went to ballot and it got turned down, then we go back to the drawing board. Is that when that that's a, a way of approaching yeah, yeah, they it? They did say that in the in the in the finance committee. What the financial model will say is that hey. You know, we want this, but the number is just unattainable at the moment. Yeah. yeah. You know, if we said, okay, you know, uh, we only can give this much right now. How do we plan this much and then add this to it? You know what I mean? So that starting number is the baseline. Of, I think I said when I went to that that conference in Colorado two years ago, we had two different groups. One said, here's all the factors that we want to have in a community, kind of like we did. Tell me what it looks like and tell me what the number is. This committee, this group of people in the in the class were said, we're only giving you fifty thousand dollars, fifty million dollars. We want the same thing though. Prioritize what you get and what it looks like. Right. And it was kind of what the ad hoc committee, and that's what we kind of did through our exercise was, okay, we know we need we should have three gyms. A minimum is two. So we know we have a place to go. We know that a lap pool is a have to, but the rec pool makes more money. And it costs a quarter to build when you have the first pool. And so we did that. And so, yeah, there are things with scale and there's consequences that come with it, but it lets us, I think the committee with a lot of work realize that we can, you know, if, you, if there was a number that we came to, um, but again, when you do it is what it means. So if you don't do that exercise for two years and that dollar has gone from a dollar to a dollar 50 a square. Yeah. Yeah. So then that cost changes. And so uh, I think Rick's right that, it could look different in the sense of it. If the school pass, we know that, okay, the blue one may be open. If, you know, if you demo that and add this, what do you get? Or parts and pieces go somewhere else. Who knows? Um, I'm just happy that they're at least taking this financial yeah. step because I think that's the key to that's anything. Good. And is they're doing it just for the community center. They're not doing community center and school together no, because they no, don't know what the school is. No, they don't. They're not. They're doing all three 
in a modeling scheme so they can say to can we afford them both next year yeah. how do we know what the school is going to be though because they don't They're have taking, it narrowed uh, down the so floor. what they said today and again i am i just heard it an hour ago so i'm probably speaking a little out of turn here for my own understanding but the number they had and there was like 105 million i think because the range per square foot what they needed was like 70 million to 130 million so i think they went in the middle just for their just estimating purposes of mm -hmm. what okay you know, total estimations. Is, is the ad hoc committee still active? Yeah, no. that's a good question. No. So what they decided at the end of that last piece was we could ask people to get together to do something else, but they were starting to, to speak other charges. And I put personally put the posh on it is that until you tell us what we're trying to do and when we're going to do it, then we're just going to be in the same boat. So give us a little more directive. And the 82 million that was put out by by the ad hoc yeah, yeah. that that had uh it, it wasn't a true number in other words the architect and the builders didn't come up with the price of no that's deal. a no oh. that's a that's a true estimate including okay. general contractor including design including okay. all the soft costs to load the building what it didn't was a final design they took all the elements square footage that was enough to then and then and then lap lanes and chairs and all that is in the yeah. soft cost. So that's a total fake number for today with estimates going okay. forward. So Rick and Ellen comments, yeah. and we see what happens, like when the school referendum went down, they've lost an entire year yeah. plus. Is there some way to strategize so that I know that you could say a dollar and it could still be denied by the voters. Yep. But is there a way to to strategize to present something that so it if it turns down, we don't it gets turned down, we don't lose another year. Like the numbers. Yes. Is there some way to do that? Like I think yeah. Put I, to I, a ballot like this yeah. is our would you do this? If not that, then this. Yeah, but, like something like that, so that it's not a if I mean we may put the eighty two million dollars. Mm -hmm out and they say no but i do it for 50 but then we have to go back to the drawing board and we lose a whole year on the ballot to get because you don't right. know well you don't even know what 50 looks like mm -hmm. you know because again it's when we did the exercise in the ad hoc committee there was three yeah thoughts of mine right there was 82 was the highest then and that's with everything and i'm using the examples of kind of the highlight things was two pools three gyms community service there uh, parks and rec uh, parks and grounds there because we'd have to demo that building and um, meeting space and then the second model went down to like 80 million but it was two gyms one pool and then the third model was like 78 million and it was like um, no community service total money maker no community service no parks no meeting space it was an athletic center and so they decided to go with the top number because only a four I say only four million dollars. Trust me, I would love to have only four million yeah. dollars. But it was a four million dollar difference, roughly in price, and the business business model change and the philosophy change of the building. And they said, "Let's go this way," because if we want to get down to a different number, we would then have to go back and say, "Okay, okay. what are you going to want?" There? So on that note, right? Yeah, they're doing this financial modeling. Yeah, I have to believe they have some sense on what the. Every town council member, every town council does. We only want to send to the voters a three percent increase. Just so well, that's, modeling it. So that's what the finance committee is going to try. I to know do. that. Yeah. So when they do that, yeah. in theory, they could back into what the pool of cash is for each of the three capital projects. Yes. So the ad hoc committee has done a lot of work. To Rogers, you yeah. I agree. If you put the kibosh sure. on it now, but to his point, if they come back to us and say, because we know. Who in the community is going to say no to a community center? Yeah. They're going to say no because of the cost. Right. Yeah. So if they come back to us and say, we're giving you $50 million for this community center, yeah. can we then regroup the ad hoc committee? And that's what we send to the ballot at 50 million so we don't lose another year? Yeah, I think they can do anything at that point. They may want to understand what 50 million would bring you because, again, if you don't know at the ballot what a $50 million community center looks like it could be, you know, again, it could be one gym, you know. But you know what? I'm going to play devil's advocate. Yeah. I don't know that they care because you presented a great yeah. project yeah. at $82 million. Yeah. 
we know the community wants a community center. Right. They don't, they're afraid to put $82 million to the taxpayers. Right. So frankly, if they say 50 million, let's just lay it on the table yeah. and be realistic. We're giving you $50 million. Right. Give us what you can do for $50 million. I honestly don't think they care whether it's 80 million or 50 yeah. million, what you get for it. They're only giving you $50 million. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hate I to agree. sound so like, yeah, yeah. Bano, but I think they don't care. Right. right. Yeah. I think that there's, our design team, he he called me yesterday from UTL checking in. And was there any movement kind of flawed? Because I think that the way they put these numbers together, they would, it would cost us more. But they could back into certain assumptions on build and that sort of stuff if that's the route we decided to go. Um, but I think the one thing that the finance committee was talking about tonight is knowing that, okay, what can we sustain without hurting the taxpayer totally? So if we only can do, I'm making a number up, uh, 200 million for all three projects. Yeah, or let's equate it to 15 million dollars a year over 30 years. Yeah, what does that get us? Yeah, and where does how much of that needs to be school? How much of that needs to be community center? Because again, you're paying it over a period of time. So that even yeah. more yeah. confirms yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. They're going to give us a number. Right. Right. And we have to make it work if we want a community center. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I think we have enough data, and I think we have resources that we could rehire for not a lot to be able to rework that. So, yes. So once the meeting happens in next month, yeah. what month are we in? October. September. So November. Meet in October. October. You'll, meet November. You'll send us an update so we can maybe spend the next meeting figuring out how to pivot to get it ready for, because when do we have to have it? When do we have to get approval to get on the ballot for June? Oh, I think it's like in February. That's not Crazy. a lot of time. No, oh. yeah. Right. Well, so, I mean, you need the well, so we had, didn't they tell us September for November this, or was it? Yeah, so it's like a two month turnaround. Okay. You need it just by, just, I don't know the right word, just for the, um, the have tos to meet the ballots, the absentees, the whole voting schedule. It's 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 like they did last meeting to the ballots being printed to be able to come back for absentees. So, you know, call it call it two months back for three months for voting. Yeah. So you get September, October, you got at least September two, that two, two and a half. Yeah, two yeah. September and October, October and November. So if you were June, you'd be May, April, they would make their final decisions. So you would have, you know. January, February, March, educate, you know, December if they got that far. So, but at least they're considering, you know, that's a big deal. But I, I think there's a lot of things that we can do, like what you're saying is have something ready. But I think one of the things is we, what we really don't know is how the community will accept anything. But if we went to different and everybody has done that, you know, you 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 go to Higgins and then the Pine Point and other places and try to get as many people to, to get a hands up value. Yes, I, I'll vote for that. But then I won't, I don't want that whole thing, but you can break it down is what we want. Right. And I, I think the pool would be one that would tell us that you go to, you know, yeah. uh, because at one time there were two or three members on the board that would go on. Now we might lose one. Yeah. Well, we've lost one, I think. But anyway, maybe yeah. we'll get some people back that that are yeah. for the pool. But I I think that's what we need to do is try to get a feeling of what is going to you know. So once we get the numbers, you'll send an email, and then we will in our next meeting make that's a plan. Sure. Yeah. Which but that number is going to be big yeah. to get. Well, the, the, we just oh. to say something, Rick. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I was going to pick up on Roger's point. So finish what you were going to say because I can come back to it. The only thing I was going to say is from the operational side of things, and this is what I really tried to drive home with the ad hoc committee is the choices we make, regardless of how much it costs to build, there's consequences on the operating side too. And so, you know, where we might be at 90% self funding. You take away this piece, and now we go to seventy percent funding. Mm. And yeah. You go to this percent now, so now you're asking yeah. for the taxpayer for two hundred thousand dollars a year in taxes. Yeah. If you added that and you did it over thirty years, that's three more million dollars. You might as well build the second pool and then right. at ninety percent. So yeah. Yeah. there's that kind of financial operation piece to consider too. So that's just want to remind us that yeah. it's just not about the bonding when you think about what the effect is on the operating mm -hmm. side, <clears throat> and then that could add up, you know, two hundred thousand dollars over thirty years. Six million, right? So, yeah. 
not a deciding factor, yeah. but when's the lease up here? Yeah, uh, the lease ends up here sep September of next year. So either way, we'll buy the window. We either have to renegotiate right. or find another place temporarily in between. And so yeah. we will be working on that. So I think that's part of what we need to mention, too. Yes. Yeah, so if and, we had a you know, I don't positive. know what we're paying a year for this place, but it's got to be some. Yeah. yeah. No, it was built into the it was built into the performer of the community center and stuff. So, again. Roger had said something about knowing if the community will accept the notion of pain. Obviously, yeah. everybody wants a community center. Kind of important to know if the community will accept the bill for it. So my feeling is we should remember that we are an advisory board and our call is to advise the council on matters relating to recreation community service. So I don't think we should advise them to jump into a cauldron of boiling water, <laughs> which I think they fear might be the case. If they come out and say, hey, let's spend $80 million and go figure that out the school, library, whatnot. So I think the way the, this committee could be the most amount of help is to take a model. Todd, I'm gonna ask you, just to interrupt myself for a second, the the plan, the proposal, the rollout that we've seen, is that far enough along to build a you know a model out of it, a styrofoam model, even if it's just an artist rendition? Because my my feeling is off of Google, it yeah. might cost five or ten thousand dollars to build that, to have that model built. Yeah. And if it's realistic enough that you, that trash, now we could sit at a table at the election and say, look what we're going to build if you approve this. And you will hear feedback. You're going to get some raspberries blown at you and you'll get some cheers yeah. as well. And we'll come away with a sense of not more than a survey which says yes i want a, sw a swimming pool yeah, yeah, yeah. yes i want a hiking trust yeah. you'll come away with a sense of i'd pay for that or yes. i won't yeah. yeah then you're we are in a much better position to give wise and sage advice to the council as long as we're honest about it. we do have some frustration of course because you know you see some progress and we want more but the way we can be the most amount of help is to have that conversation with the voters. If you put it on the ballot, that's a conversation. I don't know if it would pass or not. I've, told, I've said before, I'm not very good at politics. But <laughs> things pass and it amazes me and things <laughs> don't, and that amazes me. So I don't really know. But if it doesn't, then I think it actually puts us back a little bit and it loses our trust a little bit. So for five or $10,000, if you could have a picture speaks of a lot more than birds, but a 3D puzzle. Something you can handle and show. Point at a two-story buildings and look at the cars parked out there. It helps me to have a, a model. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, you know, I don't like to waste money, but if we're at a point where we could take that intellectual concept and build a, an icon or build something that I consider that you guys, yeah. I'm already committed for the elections. <laughs> Great idea. I've got a, yeah. got two other places I have. <laughs> you can sit there and say, this is a... This is, you know, this is a, a run out of what we think we might be able to build for $80 million. What do you think? Right. Yeah. So not saying that's going to work because the library spent 
Nancy Kroll spent some time at the election say, here's what we want to build for the library expansion, and it failed. But at least you will know, and at least you can come back to this table and say, 80 million is never going to fly, or I think it's going to work. Yeah, we right. just have to run this out some more. Then you can then we can do our duty and advise the council, really think this has got no chance of going anywhere, or we really think that this has a possibility of working. Maybe we'll say we really don't yeah. know. Yeah. But I think we would be better informed, and I think we would be doing our duty better. And I think the fastest way to get where we want to be is to get through that step. It's time I think it's time. With a number, that's going to be really, really helpful. The real number is way better than some hypothetical abstract. And a, a model allows you to sit there and say, this is what we're going to build, this is what it's going to cost. That's, that's, that's a great idea. It's all about community acceptance. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We need to listen. Yeah. We just, yeah. I mean, yeah. we really, really want, I want to swim, you know, but... <laughs> I also don't really want to write the check for that. Yeah. So somewhere in between is, you know, what, what my vote will be. And everybody's going to, I presume everybody will. Yeah. Anyway, that's my suggestion. I, I We kind of done that, did that with the public safety bill. Yes. We went to a, a lot of a lot of different places. The two chiefs were there, and as many guys as could come to those meetings yeah. and were showing what we did. But the difference was you knew it was going to be on the ballot, right? Because you had that money? No, we didn't have that money yet. Yeah. And then when we went to the board, then we got the money. Oh, gotcha. Okay. But then, then they also told you, you're going to cut it back to be good. Right. It was Less than two, 20 million. Right. And so we brought it down, and then. Right. Uh, gotcha. Did that pass on the first go? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What year was yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, but it had gone two or four, five years before that, and then it got shot down. I, I can't remember when they went for the fire fire safety building. It was like uh, five years ago. Yeah, five years before this thing happened, yeah. and uh, I think took, that's... and we worked on it three years before we were up to, to doing that. So I think that's a great idea. How does that? Because you have done a lot of community open yeah, so, house things. So. Yeah, so I can call UT our firm and say, you know, they they did what they asked. I could find out just for informational and financial purposes. If we asked for a 3D model, how long would it take? Can One, can you do it? What does it take? And how much? Yeah. They must be able to do it. You and know. then what day is election day? Because we should all put it in our calendars as planning to table. Yeah, November 5th, I think. <laughs> November 5th. Yeah, that Tuesday. Yeah. So awesome. put it in. Your calendars that you're busy. So how much yeah. when you did all of the open house and the please comment, yeah. did you did you I mean there one of the ones that I went to seemed like it was well attended. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah, the, the challenge is we gotta there's a lot of factors and I you know how do I say this? We were charged with finding a location that we already own. And again, I know there's some challenges. I've heard some from the school that I'm answering questions on out of the four sites the site we picked you know what i mean so there's no cost for the land there but there could be additional cost for traffic and moving stuff around the school mm -hmm. so i can answer those questions so i think that's going to be a lot of you know might not be the number it might be the location it kind of was with the downs with the school right it's it might have been the downs more than the number yeah. um but um was that site considered for the school what's wrong the one that we're putting the community center on it was too small, no, right? I think it's too small. Yeah. But again, who knows what yeah. the next book right, will right, be. Right, right. But to Rick's point, which is a great idea, yeah. you did have two open houses per se for people to yeah. come and see those. Yeah, did they you, were, were they well attended? Uh, if, if 35, 40 people were well attended, you know what I mean? I don't yeah. think it's, I mean, yeah. but again, in most open houses, like I know when they just did the open space plan one, they were hoping to get 60 and I got 70. So again, it wasn't, we got a lot of good feedback comments yeah. and then the other to the school things and different stuff. So um, I was expecting more direct feedback. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I this think might you, be a you different start track. with yeah. one and yeah. then you publicize what you said and yeah. what the people were yeah. and hopefully they'll talk. Then when you get to another one and hopefully you get a, you know, a, a decent So let me call and that. find out what that would cost. Yeah. Do we put a slip of paper with it and then say like, hey, tell us what you think about this. 
Oh, I think then we can we could strategize. We probably would have yeah. to have another meeting <clears throat> to then strategize what because in our diagram we've got the rendering where it is near the school in, in the report, and then you've got the kind of the overhead, mm -hmm. and so you've got kind of some of those things, and you know. That because could our next meeting is going to be after the election. Right, so that's why we may have to have an October meeting if we see what the financial they meet the second yeah. week I think of October and what that looks like. So. Should we just set that up because. They meet the second week of October. Yeah. Right. So it's actually usually the same night then. Well, but except that they meet every month. Get an, even we meet every month. Right. It before June. Right, Put right. But we head. want to go to the election for November to show people it. Right? We want well, a table. You, you can't do it. On, on, no, no. She's just saying we're not going to get a vote. We're going to get a sense of what people's reaction yeah. is. We're going to have a table well, outside yeah. the voting. A table with the model. Yeah. Well, that'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. You can, yes. That would so. be good. So let me let me get to UTL, and then if it would be, it would be that second, the same, whatever that night is. Second Thursday of yeah. the month. So it would be that might be too soon after the finance meeting. Right. So let's see. Let me let me get the modeling piece and see what that looks like. Yeah. Okay. And then Worst second. case, I mean, if people can't attend, like if they can only come in and out, we could do a virtual. Right. That might work better yeah. for people. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Anything else on the community center? All right, piping plumber. That should be. Yeah, we just, I submitted, Trish gathered any comments that were in. We submitted with Blue. We sent that to Jamie. It's it's, it's in committee now. It's going perfect. to the board. Yeah, perfect. perfect. Just, thank you for doing that. Yep. Well, and also your it's comment my as well, Megan, like, let's stay in our room. No. Um, okay. And beach fees. Yep. Yeah. Um, I just need to say this before I forget. There's two things that we need to touch on at some point. I know it's not on the agenda, and I should have asked for an addition. Um, I just want to bring up, and I can bring it up in Beach, is the Waterfront Committee's proposal they sent to us a few weeks back. So I, oh, yeah. a few months back. Yeah. I just got to remember to talk about that. And then um, we learned, and Rick was in my early meeting, about new committee appointments that they just changed. So I'll, I'll bring everybody up to speed about that. Get your opinion on how you want to react to it as a board. Um, but regarding beach fees, so um, let me just get to and then Heard Park as well. Right, Heard Park's on there. Same thing. Yeah. So I'll try to go fast because I know time wise. So, anyways, all the beach numbers are in for this year. Um, what I've shared with you, and so we're all on the same page, and I say it for the recording. The challenge with us with beach fees is every year is our beach season operates in last year's budget and this year's budget. Yeah. What I mean by that is we sell season passes in, in May and June, July, starting in May, all that revenue goes to last year's budget because our budget is July 1st to June 30th. Oh, gosh. So what you're seeing in front of you right now is yeah. beach season numbers from when we started selling season pass this year to ending September last week. So this is what I've, because that's what we all have had time to dive into. Yeah. This is 2024 beach season. I'll go back and work on with Steve Kramer, my beach manager in finance, breaking it up. So if all of a sudden in three months we see a different number, it's because 90% of the season passes we sold were sold in May and June. And right. it's in when the last budget. budget. Yeah. But I, you know, when I look at it, it's because the challenge is it is, well, how many rain days were in May and June and what time do they hit and when do we collect in the beach fee? So I look, look, look like looking at it holistically. Um, what you're seeing on the screen here on the way. Um, what you're seeing in front of you, and I got it up for, for the folks, is what we collected in revenue based on our existing, and I put draft on the top of the sheet because it's not a, um, shows you how many, Passes those numbers 27 on, the, on that top line 2764 7993. Those are how many passes we sold in those time slots again, yeah. five to five to eight, eight to four, four to six. Um, and then you even further complicated add the $30 weekend numbers. Um, tell me that again, beaches. So that it's the first column that says 2764 is five to eight, five a.m. to eight a.m. Yep. And then the $15 column there is eight to four. And then the $30 is also eight to four, but on weekends, I'll put, I should have put headers on these. No worries. And then 5 p.m. is four to six. And so 
these are the amount of passes that were sold at each beach during those time slots, and then total revenue of $2,980, yeah. okay? And then the next group down is for the season, how many resident passes we sold, how many secondary passes we sold, how many non-resident passes we sold, how many senior passes for zero we gave away. Senior well, resident or just senior? No, senior indeed. resident. We only do senior resident. Okay. For zero dollars away, total number of passes sold, total revenue brought in from passes, just so we can see. Um, there's also data on the bottom there. We won't dive in today. It's more philosophical with what we charge, but we keep track of how many days um, we close for weather. Mm -hmm. So Heard Park and Ferry, we closed 10 days this year completely, didn't open because of the weather. Uh, the meters still operate, but we didn't have staff there. 15 days um, for Higgins, and then partial days where staff might have gone in and left at one or two uh, without that deep diving. Mm -hmm. That bottom number is how many days um, uh, oh, wow. the lots were filled. Yeah. And again, heard we're allowed to go to the overflow. So that's important when we talk about the herd park design. Mm -hmm. um, to Penny's point earlier for your discussion. So that's that information there for you to. Um, closures, how come Higgins has more closures? Um, I would have to check with Steve why there's more closures. Sometimes um, it's just a matter of staffing. How many, you know, staff where, um, but I, I'd have to find out why that's different. I, I'll, give, I'll get you that answer. That's okay. Just yep. curious. Yep. No uh, need to. Even with partial days, sometimes depending on with, um, depending on the day when it was. So like we have some people that go in and clean Herd Park and, and uh, different people clean the bathroom. So sometimes they may have to go in and clean versus a contractor going in. So I'd have to dive a little deeper in the yeah, bathroom. That's okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, you don't have this in front of you. I'm going to put it on the screen because I was literally working on it when Roger and 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 uh, Art walked in today. Um, I took the same. So this top bar is the 2024 numbers you looked at. Beach passes mm -hmm. sold with the revenue down here, and here's their totals on the side. I just went through, and based on um, Penny's numbers, and you know we have talked about the. 10 not our latest recommendation of 20 flat or a number flat but the previous one um because i didn't get her email um but if we change the existing time slots to five ten dollars in the morning from five and we took you know the middle part of the day and the 30 dollar weekends and changed those both to 20 and the um this should be let me fix that right this should be a 10 I'm just make sure my math. You're saying the morning at ten. I'm just I'm just copying the existing time frame because oh. I didn't I didn't want to make too many assumptions. Oh, I see. Yeah. So this is if we stayed the same hours, and I think we need to look at our hours mm -hmm. as a whole. But if we stayed the same hours and changed the the the, the figures that Penny yeah. and the crew had submitted before, mm -hmm. hi Karen. Um, ten dollars in the morning, twenty during the day, but also twenty on the weekend. So that fee didn't change. So it wasn't a, t and then. Uh, Ten dollars for the afternoon shift, and if we change to thirty dollars, uh, fifty dollars for a bus, our revenue goes from two ninety eight to four twenty five. Wow! That's it again. Semantics: same amount of passes sold, same amount of mm -hmm. things sold. Mm -hmm. I did the same exercise with the season passes. We sold this amount of passes, and right now, and again. I'm not recommending this. I'm just doing the exercise for your point. So I don't want people yelling at me tomorrow that I'm saying let's charge residents fifty dollars for a pass. But right now it's forty five, one fifty, zero for seniors. Total number of passes we sold, one sixty four one was the total revenue we received for residents. I did the same model over here. If a resident pass went to fifty and a secondary went to ten, and a non resident went to two hundred, and a, a senior pass went from free to a dollar. Same amount of passes sold, we'd make 219. So another, you know, again, um, whether that's worth it or not, I'm just saying that that's that, that's how much money you make. You're only making, call it another fifty thousand dollars by by changing the rents. Now you could keep the residents the same, 
And again, that's why I just did this model. You keep the residents same and raise the non-residents to 200 and you make another $22,000 of non-residents. Again, choices for you guys to decide how the pass is, where they fall, what you wanna recommend. I think the bigger thing to look at is what we charge and when we charge it. Um, and again, these, we had a great beach season this year. Nice weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You can see in the, you go back to the 24 model. And I did this number on a piece of paper beside me. I didn't have a chance to get it all done. Um, but just so you know, we sold about the same season passes as we did last year for residents. Last year, we sold 316 non-resident passes. This year, we sold 436, yeah. 115 more. So some people got wise that it was $30 on the weekend, and they went and got that. So that's a metric, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, to yeah. look at. Um, and again, we give this many senior passes out. You know, again, so when we're talking about impact, that's a philosophical choice. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what we need to kind of talk about on cost prices. You know, I, I can run the model eventually too. If you know, when we did, um, or excuse me, you did, including myself, a couple of years ago, make your recommendation. We talked about changing this morning to ten, and every surfer union, every group called the complaining council said, "No, we're not going to do that." So. I think we need to have some philosophical. That wasn't us. That was like that was way before two years ago, wasn't it? Uh, no, I think we did. Yeah. When the surfers all called in, it was then. like before. Yeah, so maybe it was my little, time. Yeah, maybe yeah. For, whatever it was. The last time this board proposed fees, yeah, we actually went back twice, right? Yeah. And yeah. there was a lot of pushback for that morning piece. And again, I think we all agree, like you're going to go there every day. I see them pass. Right. right. Give some That's investment true. in the resource you're right. using. Exactly. So. Before you guys start talking about fees, I always like to understand, and we kind of talked about this a little time, what are we trying to accomplish? If we're raising more money, I always like to be able to answer people why are we raising it. Is there, is there increased resources? Functional bathrooms. Chris, you know what I mean? Is investment in infrastructure? Trainers, I mean, dog people, yeah. monitors. Right. That's what, yeah. and I think people would park appreciate ranger. that yes. instead and, of a park ranger and yeah. non porta potties, like real yeah. bathrooms. I know what the answer is, but I'm just saying, you know what I mean? No, yeah. but if you, you start off and, 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 and put an asphalt uh, layer at the uh, herd, yeah. at, at least you don't have that dust right. going all over the place and, and and people will like that then you can go to any other right. beach and, and finish yeah. them off you got to do grading at uh, uh higgins beach every yeah. year because yeah. of what's going on right. there with, with with the water right. but yeah. uh so yeah. I, I that's where that stuff goes bathrooms yeah. Yeah. right yeah yeah i i think we answered that question yeah why we're making right it, and part of it too is i think resident um, priority. Yeah. I mean, access priority. Uh, access yeah. priority. Um, I would make a recommendation. Well, I agree on the the beach passes recommendation above. We don't do two changes to season passes and beach passes. So we have a metric for next. If we if they were to go up, mm, yeah. So you would to compare, okay, beach passes versus season passes. So you'd change potentially just hypothetically change the fees, the, the daily fees, fees, but yes. leave the season passes. Yes, I agree with that. I would add, we want to encourage people to buy season passes, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. The only season pass that would increase would be the res non-resident. Mm -hmm. I agree. 175. I don't think I'd yeah. go to 200, but I might go yeah. to 175 yeah. and just keep agree with you. Yeah, so in that philosophical conversation, and I, I can see both sides of it, when, when you guys collected your data, I think more of the non-resident passes were closer to 175, if not 250. So 175, 200, you know, I think based on what other people are charging, I think you could argue one of, either one of those. Um, the philosophical to to whoever said, you know, getting access for residents, a lot of communities limit how many non-resident passes. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying we need to do that, but some consider, you know what I mean? Okay, we're only going to do 300. And then there's either a lottery, there's a first truck, come first serve, because 
again, that allows, you know, yeah, it, it saves residents a little bit from, you know, yeah. passes. So it's more of a yeah. philosophical decision than it yeah. is a financial decision. Mm -hmm. I'm not advocating one way or another, but that's another metric that I think you could consider to put residents first um, in, in that kind of realm. So I think those are kind of two. And then obviously, I don't have Penny's email here, but again, if you had a flat fee of you're going to the beach, it's 20 bucks no matter when you go, stay all day. If you don't want to pay 20 for go there at six in the morning, sir, buy a season pass. But what if those no, season surfers are non-residents? They would have to buy a... But then if we limit, so then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, yes, there's cause and effect. And so I think you're doing the right thing by um, working through that. You know, maybe you don't limit and maybe you just raise and that's what... Well, you, know. well, you said there was a, over a hundred and some odd increase in the... Uh, yeah, well, last year was 316. This year is 436. Yeah. So, so so somebody is, is picking up on the on making money and not making money, but but the the one fifty to or one fifty five for the non resident pass is saving them for that whole summer season yeah. because they're probably there they either the, with with dogs or or and and uh, surfing yeah. And, and, yeah. And if you advertise the night before that you're going to have good surf, well, they're there. And things I have heard directly, and Penny's mentioned yeah. to us a few times, our biggest challenges are when, when we don't have staff. And so yeah. to Penny's definition, and again, we get a lot of people that go to the beach for $5 or sometimes free if they're not paying the meter prior to when we get there. And so they've used the bathroom, they've used the dog bags, they've used those things. And at the end, they wait till three o'clock to come in and then pay the lesser rate and stay till eight o'clock so the morning's all jammed up with trash and so again that's okay we just don't have the resources presently to match that service demand you know what i mean yes. and even this year for the first time we put four porta potties and i haven't seen what that bill is yet um at herd park at the beginning of the season every day because we were having so many failures with the bathroom one and two the lines to go to the bathroom we're down the ramp on on busy days, and so we had the four porta potties and the lot because people were just standing out there. Because again, three women's room yeah. don't do it. Yeah, you know, four stalls and the guys don't do it. So we added the four porta potties for the first time. We kept those all year. Um, but it worked. It, it helped. Yeah. Yes, it helped. And so those are considerations for her park down the run. But that's um, that's how much pressure was at Heard Park this year um, and the other beaches, but Heard Park especially. Yeah, it was um, a couple of times like I would like run down at lunchtime to want to go for a swim and yeah. I couldn't park. No, most days that lot was full right before nine o'clock. They were lined up in the morning, ready to go. It was like 11 o'clock, like I'd take yeah. an early lunch from work oh, I work from home and yeah. I couldn't park. So those are the kind of financial philosophicals. And then I would love to what whatever we propose or think about match it to whatever service. It's I don't see it as a a profit gain i see as a, having more revenue to reinvest in getting more rangers okay you know this year if the numbers were true and what i was saying karen is that the numbers that are on that sheet that's in front of you is the 2024 beach season nice. but when you look at the past money most of that passes in last year's budget when we if we raise the fees keep the fees the same for passes that'll go in the fy 25 budget so the money's in there but i like looking at the beach season so we can look at total rain days total closures um yeah. you know and again with the rangers this year um we've had good results um a little bit of burnout because we worked them hard and they changed a lot of shifts and so um we'll be coming back with a new proposal uh to cover more of the beaches um time frames this year i think you know the three for three folks they work great we were very fortunate to hire tony mm -hmm. as our lean ranger um, with his management skills and thankfully, our other two rangers, Summer and Nick, were very flexible with their schedule. Most people, when you hire them, like, I'll work eight to four. But next week, they get a schedule, and there's an event, and they're working three to six, and they're coming at eight and going home. They were they were more than flexible. That's not the norm when you're hiring people these days. So we see the areas we that we were weak in, we know where we were strong. Um, rangers also noted that you know the goal was to get to the trails, and we didn't get to the trails because there was so much beach pressure. So as far as like the Eastern Trail, especially. Um, Interesting. We I was at the Eastern Trail Alliance annual meeting last night and that, that actually came up. Yeah. Was the lack of 
like enforceability on the trails. Yep. And I was like, we have park rangers, but they are pretty busy. Yeah. Mm. So I, we have in the budget still, and I'm going to, he doesn't know the shit. He's, he's wanting to do it, but it was his recommendation that I think we have enough in the budget to put 10 hours for like four or five weeks to put Tony on the Eastern trail to do some data collection to say, okay, here's our, because right now he can tell you when the busy points are. He told me on Wednesday, which I didn't realize he goes, Saturday is the slowest day at the beach. Because it's turnover day. Yes, yeah, turnover day. That's he said, That's been true right away. Right. But he said Saturday at six, hang on, because everybody's checked into their summer cottage and the party starts. And so he goes, it's bonkers at six o'clock at night on a Saturday. Yeah. But yeah. You know, until you had that operational living it, breathing it, I, you know, it's like, so that's data we've collected to do better scheduling and stuff. Yeah, um, makes sense. yeah it totally makes sense. And he said on a weekday, they're already here. It's Tuesday, it's good. It doesn't matter that it's a Tuesday. It's Tuesday in the summer and it's 80. You know, so um, so that's kind of ranger piece, um, kind of beach numbers fees uh, on the herd park front. Uh, well, let, we'll go to herd park afterwards. But how do we? You have those two other points. How do we want to? How do you want to do this? So I think what's you, our timeline? So up with a I and Karen can chime in because she's on both finance and on council, obviously. Um, I told Tom when we chatted briefly about this. I would love to have some some recommendation to council in November and before December because you get into the holidays. I don't want to do it in the budget season. No. You know, I want to have, I want to build the resource levels, Rangers, whether it's CIP projects, when we go to bring our budgets to Tom in March. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to have something approved first of the year to know these are the new beach fees. So I, I think we need to have something back by the end of our November meeting. I think you're right. All right. So when we did the dog ordinance, it worked out really well for everyone to chime in. And then we spent the meeting with those recommendations. So yeah. could, what would you guys think about doing that? Like making the, putting in sort of whatever your recommendation is. Like you made your recommendation. And then we have a, a document to then discuss. Yeah. And maybe just, I mean, like on a Google Doc, like each fee. Well, well we, we got hours. A couple things is hours, hours for collection. All right. So if I created a Google spreadsheet yeah. and then everyone noticed yeah. it. So we need hours of collection. Yeah. Could you also put what the current is on that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can send that to you, Trish. Do we really want to change that? Well, the only thing, no, I no, I still think. To their point, and, and um, the hours of collection total five thirty to six are fine, but it's when the fees are associated. Okay, so the and associated fees. Right. So if you wanted okay. to say okay from five thirty to to nine, you yeah. still want to have a fee, or do you want to say from? Got it. You know, if you're a flat rate person, flat rate person. If you want to say, you know what, we're gonna do, gonna keep that, but then from, you know, because um, we know there's afternoon pressure, we're gonna go from noon nine to six is. One fee and there's no afternoon. Yeah, so complicated. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot. I agree with Penny. I like yeah. the idea of a. You know, so I think that I you can weigh that. I can run numbers to different things on the backside for you guys as you're as I see you guys populate what you want. Um, again, I think the key is the season passes because again, yeah. this whatever we charge should not affect. Well, let me, that's not true. I was going to say should not affect affect a resident. Yeah, but it does affect a resident if they know that they can show up at, at a certain time and go for free. So that's when it's, you know, whether we're, whether we're not collecting or, but if they have a season pass, they can go anytime they want. Yeah. The $40 yeah. and then we've already got. Free. Well, but another question under season passes is potentially limiting non-resident. I would think so. Yes. Are you in favor of limiting non-resident passes? Do other towns do yeah. that? Yes. Some they do. Yep. Some do, some don't. Yeah. Uh, the other question to consider on your survey poll is do we, and again, I can see both sides of it. Do we charge a, a senior fee for a pass? You mean season pass? Yeah, for a season pass right now at zero. Do we charge a dollar to get your, your sticker fee back? Do you leave it at zero? I'm okay either way. We're going to do a better job collecting data. When we do our spreadsheets and background for years, and I don't know why we didn't do this before, we put zero. So when you total it up, you got to hand count everything. We're just going to put a dollar or $6 or $100. So we can divide whatever ever number it is by that amount. Mm -hmm. But we still zero. Something. It's free if you vote for the community center. But if <laughs> <laughs> or at least the Hurt Park project, you know, yeah. next year. Um, but yeah, so I mean, just to feel that, I think okay. I think for the seniors, it's again, we're talking about 
$3,500, it's not a big charge of dollars. I think like- but I think a zero is fine too. Philosophically. I'm, if I'm gonna charge, if you're gonna charge me, charge me ten dollars. Yeah, not don't one. waste my time. Like, yeah, like yeah. if, if it'd be an I, accounting. I, I love saying to seniors, we give it to you for nothing. It's something they get for nothing. Yeah, it's an easy. Yeah, you know, I mean, in the charge of thirty five hundred dollars that we need, I think that right. was what passes thirty five okay. fifteen. So I will set up a Google list. spreadsheet. You guys can. I'll try to create a column for everyone. So the questions are the hours as they are now, yep. and you can check yes or no su suggested hours. Do we want a four flat rate season passes? What the fees would be? Yeah, yeah. Was am I right that Penny was suggesting twenty dollars for normal hours? She, and I think latest... she said thirty, didn't she? I think she was just saying flat is what I got oh, okay. from her. And Todd, do you have a feeling on this? Do you have a recommendation from the department? I want to look at particularly from the eight to four slot. Yeah, I mean I. Hey Penny, can you just? I, we didn't have your email. Were you saying a flat twenty dollars or a flat thirty dollars? Well, the what I indicated was at the last meeting, one of the board members suggested a flat rate. Gotcha. Um, the discussions that Dana had with the residents at the beach and the staff at the beach, and that he and I chatted about, was he asked people if they thought a twenty dollar flat rate was reasonable. Yep. And everybody felt that it was more than reasonable. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks, Penny. Yep. Uh, so my recommendation, and I'll go back to my staff, um, get off of there. There's a couple things. Nice thing about $20 is hopefully you're going to hand me a $20 bill. I don't have to right. carry fives and twenties right. and hundreds. Right. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And that saves you time. It saves time. It's less cash that's around. So if you went twenty dollar flat fee, that's from five thirty in the morning until the well, day's done. You could do two things. You could propose ten dollars from five thirty to eight, and then you know you can make any of that work, or you could propose a flat twenty for the whole seven days a week. Anytime you go there. Well, last last at the last meeting, we had ten dollars from five thirty to eight and yep. four to six yep. and twenty from nine to four. Right. That that's this model that I ran down here for passes, this bottom one right here, 10, 20, these are yeah. in was Penny's original numbers yeah. in the hours that we had. So you could see um this was the thirty dollar on weekend columns, this was the twenty in the middle, and these were the charging more on the end. So that's that's why I did this model. Um, I could then go run and say, okay, I could take all these numbers, add them together and charge by 20. And that's what your potential revenue could be on the back side of it. I can run that for you, but I think it goes more philosophically and how you think, because again, but I'll speak for Karen, when people call in, it, there's different pressures from different groups. Whether it's surfers or blah blah blah. But so it's not to backtrack since we already sent an email recommending this. It, are we now looking at? Do we want to toss out the ten dollars for five thirty to eight and four to six and twenty from nine to four? And is the other alternative just twenty the entire day? I think those are your two choices. Okay. But if you when do we stop collecting? Sorry. Uh, Monday of Labor Day. So we start. You don't know what time in the day. So oh, six. 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 Okay. six. So after six, it's free. Yeah, so from five. Well, they're open at five thirty. I mean, I, because the, the 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 gates are locked at Higgins. Now I think it's locked on every other one too, right? Okay, but her, so we've already you know, got the that. other. Okay. And we'll talk about her at Higgins. The gate goes up at five thirty. That's right. Machines start working. Yeah. Gate goes down at nine. Machine turns off at six. Yeah, that's so all the machines are programmed five thirty to six. How much cash are you handling? So this year from five to eight. Um. So right here you can see this year from five to eight for all three beaches, uh, we handled twenty five thousand dollars. Oh, how much cash versus credit? Uh, cash is twenty five thousand uh, dollars. We don't have no. credit cards, so um, well, we ought to be looking at. Looking so credit cards. Suggested. Where did that go? Because I went to. Oh, the smokes. Yeah. yeah, you just did. Wait, just I lost a. It worked. Oh no, parking meters. So parking yeah. meters. I don't have it broken up by time frame. Yeah. But we collected one hundred and three thousand dollars from the parking meters. About four to one. Well, it could be all day because a lot of times when people come in, oh. so from so from five thirty to eight, people if they're paying, they're paying the meter if they are honest, and then four to 
any time during the day after that, if it's a closure and the meter's there, they're obligated to pay whether they do it or not. It's different. And then depending on who we have for coverage, you know, but we usually have somebody there till six. And so, but a lot of times people come in, oh, I don't have any cash. Pull right up here. They hand the credit card to the attendant. Credit card yeah. goes, boom. Here's your receipt. Put that on your window. Thank you. And so they stand right by the machines and collect that. But the original question is, again, we collected $25,000 in cash between all three beaches. The three. reason I'm asking is because when you go from five to a round, a, a non round number, yeah. then it requires change making. Yeah. Right. Cash. Yeah. 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 A little more onerous than yeah. a $5 bill. Yeah. But people don't carry $5 bills and more. Right. But I, yeah. I think if you went with just one number the whole day, you could go to that, what she talked about, one meeting, the kiosk type of thing. Yeah. And I went through it when I was in Charleston. Yeah. I was going to go do it around. Yeah. And uh, we put the, the uh, phone, everybody got a phone, yeah. and it read it, and then it said, asked you a question or two, like how many hours, and we put down four hours. When the four hours came up a half an hour before, yeah. it came back and well, said... We can talk about passport. We've, we've looked at a little bit of passport parking, so we can talk after yeah. we talk about this. Okay. That's a whole nother model. No, yeah, but passport parking and um, herd park, we can talk really quickly about passport, but I can give you some of those numbers. Because because if we have to buy meters more often, then let's go to a different thing that yeah. you don't need a meter. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, we're not going to buy people phones. But, but I'll, I'll talk about some of the Fiscal and operational yeah. challenges of that can't system. be done next year. But the reason that I asked yeah. is because if you take that fifteen dollar fee for eight hours, it's dollar eighty seven and a half cents an an hour. Yeah, that comes out to five dollars and sixty two and a half cents for three hours in the morning. Yeah, so it's actually cheaper to. It's actually a bargain to go in the morning. So it makes sense, especially if you're contemplating raising the fee to twenty dollars for the morning section. It looks like it's going to be raised just to be equitable, right? Mm -hmm. But raising it more than five dollars is a might cost money. Yeah, it might cost money to staff. Yeah. So I think that again, if you are going to keep multiple fees, which again I'm unsure how I feel right now, you either got to go from five to ten, ten to twenty. Because 15 kills us right now. You know, well, you know you're asking for five. Do that. At the last meeting, we've already covered this ground. Right. So I don't want to spin right. wheels. Right. We yeah. all pretty much said 10 from 530 to 8, 4 to 6, yeah. Yeah. 20 from 9 to 4. The question now that I think we need to all weigh in on, and we can, don't have to do it now, but is whether we want a flat rate, 20 bucks for the entire day yeah. or $30 yeah. for the entire day. And what does it do for the weekend? Does the right. weekend go up? Well, so no, but looking yeah. at the model, yeah. Again, but if you look, you're losing money on the on the thirty dollars a day. It would be, well, but when you look at the total model, if you went from, again, depending on how you look at these numbers, when you where's which one went? Get out of there. When you look at the model, so this is how we charge this year, right? Up top here is that one yeah. you have in front of you. Yeah. Down below is if we took those same numbers and went 10, 20. I changed the thirty dollars a weekend back to twenty. Yeah, you know what I mean. So there was no difference, yep. and then ten dollars in that PM shift and raised the bus from forty-five to fifty for a bus load. We make another hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. Okay, by doing that, you mm -hmm. know what I mean. One consideration is, and we heard this before, would be is if you left again, if you left five to eight for people that are just coming to surf and dog walk, you're charging them more. And then you change from eight to six or eight to five if you want to give them a break, $20. You, you know, I mean, you're going to capture this number as $20 too. You know what I mean? Versus having, you know, more tens and the eight, you know, you can, I think that's a discussion you guys can have. You know, lower it from, make it from eight to five instead of eight to six. So the person working gets home and can go for free, but you're charging just a flat $20 anytime in there. So you kind of eliminate the person that's showing up to spend the rest of the night there. I don't know. I mean, that's an operation. But we're to, yeah, but but we residents use... are going to be buying a pass. A pass. So this we're, what we're discussing is for non-residents. So it's important, but 
Yeah, um, we used to stop collecting at five o'clock for many, many years. Yeah, it went to six. It's been since I've been here. Yeah, six. So again, that's a that's an adjustment. So you, you know, again, anybody coming home from work wants to go walk the beach at five, and then you have that opportunity. You know what I mean? But um, but after five, you can bring your dog, and then you're using dog bags and. Yeah, for that little bit of time, I don't think the dog wasn't coming, but it's a shorter time, isn't it? What's what do you the, mean? Um, Five to dusk. And, yes, right. So, yeah, so you lose an hour of collection if it's five. So, under that scenario, I get home from work, I take my dog down at five, I do not have a season pass, I pay $20 and I go for a walk, and I'm done. I leave the beach at six, yep. paying $20 for one hour. Yes, yep. And so you as an individual would have to decide, do I go get a season pass? Yes. If I do that 20 times, I'm going to get a season pass. Right. Exactly. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yep, yep. No, but that, that would be the case. Okay. Yep. That would be the case. Okay, there's a lot of different options. There. That's what I'm saying. There's, <laughs> there's a lot, and it's really about what's wh why we're raising the money, and I think we have those reasons. Um, is it fair and equitable to everybody? Are we sharing our resources? Or are we gatekeeping? You know, where do those, um, does it affect, you know, we heard from businesses like, oh, they're not going to, they're not going to come to us. These fees are still cheaper than anybody else around us. Yeah, they are. You know. Significantly. Yeah. Um, so it's not like we're, we're not price gouging and we're not saying we're charging 50, don't come here. We're saying we're fair. Pay for the resource you're using. Um, <laughs> I got to tell you this story. It's just what happened to me going to the gym on a Wednesday morning. No, Tuesday morning, I couldn't get out of Higgins Beach. The wow. cars the cars were lined up all the way to 77. Wow. One car coming in from the beach was there, and then there was one car in between blocking and people coming into the park lockers. Then I saw somebody run, and the gate opened up, and I was able to go. Wow. And I went home, and I told my wife, I said, something, what's going on this morning at the at the beach? I said, I've never seen that many cars. And then it came out, what happened is the senior class decided to have <laughs> morning. Skip day? Yeah. No, it wasn't a skip day. They were going to see the sunrise Oh. Uh -huh. as a group. Uh -huh. And I thought that was wonderful. <laughs> Except <laughs> couldn't get out of your house. I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. But that, but that, but that was only for that was surface, Roger. You'd be yeah. throwing up flares. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was great that the senior <laughs> class. Well, they were residents. It was, it so. was the first day of class, yeah. and they all did that. And I said, "Hell, that's, that's great." great. great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of decisions, Trish, and that's the hard part. And when you get in front of council and you have people input, so when you think about your reaction and what you're going to put down on the paper, and what you're recommending, think to to Rick's point on. You know, earlier when we talked about the community center, is what can we get past? How do we move the needle without going so far that they're going to be like, "This is crazy." You know what I mean? Is it a little bit? Is it a lot? Is it changing the hours and the? I agree with the season pass yeah. thing, kind of staying the same, considering non-resident. You know, I think limiting it maybe you know too much at once. So like, I think those are the things. So when we go in front of finance committee and recommend, and we go in front of council, whatever that process is. We've thought about all those challenging questions that we're going to get asked. So to Rick's point, sitting in the boiling pot, how do you make a decision? You know. Okay, so I guess the charge is for everyone to come to the next meeting. With a well, no. With well, if you if numbers. you fill out the sheet ahead of time, I will, yeah, I, I, I can, I'm actually not going to fill it out because there's too many iterations. Yeah, I'm going to give the points that people need to bring their recommendations. Yeah, to. yeah, and I'll run some different scenarios financially, like I did here, but I'll try to take it so you can see what that potential impact would be. Because again, I'm not in favor of raising the senior fee from zero to anything because it's only $3,500. You know what I mean? It's 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 a nice thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Out. We may have to spend the next meeting talking I about know, the community center. That's yeah. why I'm, I'm... Yeah. Well, I was wondering with this ask, maybe we could do it within the next two weeks. Yeah, that's what online. I'm thinking. I yeah. mean, and just, yeah. yeah. Except though, some of it's like bartering. Like, well, yeah, I, I would not completely yeah. eliminate thirty dollar weekend. I'd say five thirty to eight ten bucks, eight to five twenty five. But then you get five dollar bills. I got to make. And... Yeah, yeah. All right, fine. <laughs> you convinced me. No, but yeah. I, yeah. But again, I think I think we have one. Well, I think that's leaning towards still keeping it not flat. I no, because I I think 
Yeah, I just feel like we, we've talked about, Rick, one of the other points, like if you bring a family from nine to 11, you've got little kids, you're paying $20 and you're only there for two hours. I mean, I guess that's like- That's, a, that's still a bargain. I, I agree. Yeah, for I, a family. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I guess yeah. No, you it's can convince me. Like Let me try to send some. Of the, you, okay, check, right. Trish, sure. Trish, when you send that email out asking those questions, I will try to send some of the operational challenges. If you know on there, like, hey. All right, I will try. Forgive me if it's not exactly what we talked about, yeah. and feel free to edit it. But like, like no, yeah. Trish, that's not what we meant. So yeah. please feel free to do that. Yeah. But like five dollars is hard to make change with, and yeah, absolutely. Know, and I get it. You're right. And I will point. say it out loud. If we're going to charge thirty on weekends, I want to do it from the time we open, not. Two months and not two months, because then there's Agreed. a third factor. No, it's right. so those, that's something. If you decide that you're in the camp that it's you want to stay thirty, right? It's for Absolutely. the whole season. Totally agree. Okay, yeah. so I'll but, do my best and edit me. Correct. Again, that's not a money grab. That's an operational right. nightmare right. for people right. sitting in the booth. Okay, so, so again, the fifteen is from three. nine until three. Oh, four. Correct. Three and then Four. the the other five is is after that. Is the evening. you got morning and evenings okay. and then the now it, this tells me if that's the number of passes, of passes and that's the number of for thirty uh, people are not coming to the beaches on on the weekend. Well, you got to remember this, kind of, but this fifteen is seven days a week for a lot of the season. This is oh, only okay. two days a week. Oh, okay. And it's two days thirty dollars for that's two months. That's the challenge. Yeah, it's two oh. days a week for two months versus. Seven okay. days a week yeah. for for four months and uh, five days a week for the last yeah. two months. Okay. So it's it's a super hard end. And last question before we move on to your other points: yeah. this excludes or is exclusive of the passport strategy technology? Yes, this is not okay. Yeah, BD and and I can tell you that too. We we fire sorry police department myself. We've been meeting with the passport company because it was requested from. The uh, co-op in the waterfront committee report and look at how do we charge it, um, co-op parking lot and stuff. We're still in conversations with them. The challenge for this, the system is um, they take more of a percentage of every dollar we do over the meter than we're presently being charged. Um, we negotiated down, it's about $60,000 a year just to have the software, both for enforcement and operation. Um, and then you have to buy tablets and printers. Yeah. So, you know, we're probably 70 grand and just have to pay. And then we lose a bigger percentage of our pay. So take this number we had here now and take away 70 grand. I thought the, the co-op parking thing had died. So it's surprising to hear that there's still a conversation because yeah. that's, I thought we were going to address parking as a whole town. Yeah. So like of course it costs a lot because you're only talking about one parking lot. Well no no that would be no that would be town wide that'd be town for all wide. the beaches passports mm -hmm. so you know just the the co-op is why it got brought back up again but that's if we put passport parking at all three beaches add the co-op and then you can expand it anywhere you want that's also the new enforcement software for PD to write tickets and collect and that sort of stuff so it's it's a yeah, it's a it's a um. But you're you got to pay for that somewhere. So off your profits, you're paying, you know, that amount of money. Mm -hmm. It's a decision. The other challenge I worry about is our cell service is not great. You know what I mean? So if people try to pay, you're not yeah. eliminating staff. They'd be walking around with a ticket or with a with a tablet going, you know, they they paid online. If they expired, give them a ticket. Okay. There's a whole nother enforcement piece to it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I think the recommendation from chief, and I don't want to worry about that, we're not ready to do that do okay that, take that on so great segue into the co-op thing yeah what what do we need to do now so we never officially when karen brought um the waterfront committee co-op parking recommendation to this board we never officially we said it but we didn't put it in writing i don't think or made a motion that we were tabling it until we got further well, i thought we did that. because uh, it also was encompassing the park it was like a big thing well it's like, east grand it was in front of our right, one. it was way beyond our soul so tom had asked me have we made a final recommendation and i said we did but i don't know if there was anything like a you know anything that came i'd have to go back so i thought the recommendation coming out was we we were only looking at the co-op and we felt like this had to be evaluated town-wide not just yes because, because it, it was also coming out of a committee that knew nothing about 
beyond the co-op. Right. So, I mean, they are just focused on that. I, yeah. I think the co-op is a very different parking lot, a very different situation. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, we're gonna yeah. so when they came with that recommendation, I was like, this is so particular. Yeah. And it's a lot of work for one parking situation. Um, I know it, a certain counselor brought it back up this past month. I think that's why Tom asked me. To he, and about. that's fine. But he, he brings it up even though he specifically knows why it died because of what I just said. Like, we felt like that was such a small issue. We want to address it. So, I mean, I think the next question for the council is, like, do you want to address parking town-wide? Um, because we're having, I mean, we're having issues at time point. We're getting a lot of emails. We just slammed on a bunch of people who are doing parking in their, in their, I saw that in their yards. yards. And, you know, Lots I think scenarios. that's also how you limit access to the beach. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a lot of moving pieces, but I wouldn't think it would be unreasonable to say we need to look at parking as a whole throughout the town. I think the co-op should be private. It should be for the fishermen. I, I have, like, yeah. I think it should be, mm -hmm. I think that's in the voters, but they can't control the beach people right yeah, now. Yeah, there's, there's covenants through DEP and not DEP, but the state, as far as access, half the half the lot is managed by a covenant or well, two thirds of the lot is managed by a covenant. The bathroom triangle is a cup state. So they got to kind of play nice within each other. There's a lot of. When there's a restaurant, I mean, it's. Yeah, there's a lot of factors there. So. So can the recommendation, I mean, I think we did table it because we felt it was bigger than us. Mm -hmm. I think so the recommendation, can that be the recommendation that, that there is, we will have a clear direction on what you're asking us to evaluate. Yeah. And that <laughs> under, I love your comments, are like staying in our lane. Our lanes are the beaches. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We're happy to give a recommendation and we are working on that, right. but the rest of it is bigger than us. How would it would affect us in the beach realm? I mean, arguably, you could put meters along East Grand Avenue. Don't say that. Yeah, yeah. Again, Ooh. you run into the Ooh. without going down a deep hole, you get into we operational costs. You get into philosophical decisions. Oh, we tried that. The committee, the committee that says we don't want to get involved. And you're going to pay twenty six dollars to go to the bank for fifteen minutes, regardless. Right. right. And it's a whole new world in parking. Right. Yep. So I think that it's a whole new world. I right. Think that's why it comes back to what are we trying to accomplish? Are we trying to regulate parking? Are we trying to make money? Are we trying to, you know, we're trying to maintain the sustainability and the quality of life in Scarborough. And I would say, based on what some of these other comments yep. is, that's declining. Yep. Yep. So yeah. some of it's sustainability for our natural resources. Yep. Some of it is quality of life. Yep. Some of it is environmental. Those are the, the those are our goals, and yep. so I, why the people turned it down before a year ago, you didn't have to pay twenty six bucks to park in Portland. Right. Yeah, that's it's a whole new world. Yeah. So I think that's so, where we need guidance from. If you can find us. Exactly. It's like annoying <laughs> to go in there now. If you can find, yeah. Best place to go is to know because you can go get a bite to eat and it's free parking. But that's it. You just yep. gave away Other that than secret. Than where the Mellows. The Mellows. <laughs> Well, that's true. So, does that answer your question? Does that address? Yeah, what... I, I think. Yeah, I can just. I can just say that you know the statement is, and I will. It'll come in the minutes, Emily. Emily, when you listen to us, please put in the minutes that we we need more clarification on what we're evaluating. Yeah, and we're happy to be part of a team effort that's a town wide, but we don't feel like we can address the whole thing. Right. And thank you, Emily. Thank you, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, you had one other. Yeah. So something. one other thing, quick, uh, just for you guys. Um, uh, herd park things that are happening right now. Um, this up here is, was the latest parking plan in this recent budget, just so you know where we're moving. We have just met with mm -hmm. Public Works and Engineering. They're putting on the schedule, this will be where the bus trolley stop is, where that arrow is, oh, which yeah. got approved. Again, so you guys know when people ask you, the four projects that I'm going to talk about all came through the budget process, but they're being fun with beach reserves. So money that we over make or underspend is funding and that's one of your right. things we talk about raise yep. fees so public works is going to be working on bus trolley stop here we're going to be um uh that i get a call tomorrow but we had a, a site meeting today ron forrest is going to be installing new split rail fence this fall right here they are moving it in about two feet from its existing location closer to the parking lot so that way this bus trolley stop can be formed yeah. Yeah. as well as there's one scrubby pine and a couple bushes are all going to get removed along the edge of the fence on the Avenue 5 side. 
and reclaim what we put down, which is free, which we have from road material projects. That'll be a walking path to the beach nice. on the outside of the parking lot. So that's going to get done by public works. Um, we're in the middle of finalizing the contract to have the two gates installed. So this will be the exit here. This will be a 10 foot gate. Um, just so in case you get asked, there's about 22 feet from where the gate will be to the edge of the road. Plenty of visibility to pull out and see left or right. Sure. But, um, this will become we one thing we did different on from the plan. This will be the ticket booth right now. It lives over here. Um, the ticket booth will be moved here. We are making two lanes. Instead of installing a 10-foot gate, this will now be a 20-foot gate. So we're going to have a pass lane yeah. and a pay lane. So nice. if you have a season pass, nice. you can just pull up and stop and you'll see your pass and move forward. Mm -hmm. And then you'll come into the pay lane. The other good thing about this scenario is being an exit only, if we're into the overflow lot, people always come here and talk with the attendant. So now they can pay the machine and pay the attendant. You can hand them their slip and they can continue down the parking lot to yeah. the overflow lot to get people mm -hmm. off the road quicker. Yeah. So that'll help some timing there. So that was advice from the gate company. Um, so fence, gate, uh, trolley stop. This whole painting design, uh, we're probably not going to, and the, the uh, crack seal, we're probably not going to tackle this fall. Um, we're in conversations for the spring. I want to talk to our design team um, because then it'll be part of the herd park discussions. It should be coming back on the 2026 CIP project. But the good thing about the three things that we're doing, fence, trolley, and gates, and moving our shack, it'll all work with the existing traffic pattern. So it doesn't, we just have to redo our signage. Hey, entrance only, exit only, pay lane park. We, we're not changing anything. We don't have to do that part. So things we're accomplishing is getting a trolley bus stop so they don't come down and jam up the corner and yeah. drive through Pillsbury, which yeah. is a giant complaint. Yeah. Um, it allows us uh, to do the walkway so people walking in the parking lot. Just so you know, there's usually an opening here and an opening here and an opening here to get out of the parking lot. The only opening will be down on the end here now because we don't, one of the complaints we get from people is people are just diving in and out of the parking lot pedestrian wise. Yeah. So the answer is, well, I walk the beach every day. Well, if you're walking, you can walk an extra 40 feet and then walk down the pathway. Yeah. Um, I was, when we were doing our site visit uh, last month here to talk about kind of with the, with the initial look at the gates, I was standing at the end of the orange barricades and an older gentleman plowed the sign over and plowed the barricade over and almost ran over the, the contractor. So oh. it's and so they wonder why we have those barricades there. It's like it's like the Bermuda Triangle. And then people come around the ticket booth now and try to cut this corner. So the thing when this gate gets installed, it'll be on an oval pad. There'll be a bollard before in front of the gate housing and two bollards on either side so my staff can stand behind the bollard. Yeah. 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 Do you know what I mean? Safety. Um, yeah. The other nice thing about this, if we really get jammed up in the pass lane, we can pull people into the lot and get them queued up further. And so I think it's gonna help and then we'll discuss everything else. But the painting piece, I think we're gonna wait and do the rest of it because the painting will work. So that stuff is all happening. Um, the rest of the fence, so you know, will get replaced in the spring because there's a lot of broken. Yeah. They only had enough stuff in stock to do the one side. We've got approved in the budget to replace it all. But so you'll see two parts. It'll get done in April, she said. So that all that split rail will get replaced. And then we'll replace these two sections that go down to the entrance of the beach um, that were lost by the storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that's all in the works right now as far as her punt goes. It's great. Right. You going to have a new bathroom put in there, Phil? So that's this is where the location would be. That's will come before council in the spring. Um, but the goal would be to um, we just invested in the new decking, so you know. The goal would be to level this building completely, put some sort of in two thirds of it, probably some sort of pergola or gazebo to get out of the shade and put picnic tables underneath it. Yeah. And then in the front where we have the showers, install shower trees, mm. so people would shower and deal with that there. And then in this back side here, um, this would be the new building with on the back side of it would be your traditional four or five stall restrooms. In the front would be five or six universal bathrooms. Right now they say oh, women, wow. but they'd be yeah. universal. So mm -hmm. anybody, any gender any, can go in those. 
um, but they would still be your traditional bathrooms in the back, which would increase our bathroom nice. count by double. Um, this right here, um, we're proposing putting a garage on there um, so that we can put like each wheelchairs in there and start having that accessible, which we don't have as a resource now. Um, I don't want to dive down into it deep, but I will tell you, and I'll have a recommendation for you in November. Um, presently, our concession lease with Emma's is year to year. Um, we proposed this year raising the fee. Uh, we did it too late, but I don't think we're going to be able to raise our rent with our existing tenant further. Uh, I'm considering do we have a concession standard on that um, down there? Is it meeting our goal? Would we break about even? Is it better to be put a garage door in there and have storage at beach wheelchairs now instead of in five years from now? So and more bathrooms and more bath. You know, but again, we can only do so much inside. So yeah, depending on what happens this budget cycle, we may make some choices to improve the restroom capabilities in that facility versus having food. And so we can open, open up possibility of a contract for the food truckers. Well, again, planning is going through food court conversations right now. Yet yeah, we could talk about food trucks. Mm -hmm. Yep, as a different revenue source. Um, so it, 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 we need to figure out how to get more bathrooms in there sooner than later mm -hmm. because the porta potties are very expensive and they're, they're just and they're full. They're full, and it's yeah. it's another another dilemma. So, anyways, there's a lot going on right there. Um, two quick things that. Um, well, the last thing I just need to share with you, we learned, uh, we talked about it with Karen today in our morning meeting, um, it just got voted in that three, three-year terms is going to be a term limit now for committee members. Three, so nine years. So nine years on a committee is going to be a term limit. Um, and then it affects, it goes into effect December 31st of this year. Um, of 2024. So if you have a term existing, for example, Art, I know you've been on more than nine years. Yeah. Whenever your term ends, you would have to wait a year before you could reapply, right. but it ends that term. The challenge that I think we have is that in some other committees, I checked today, Rick would be done as of December 31st of this year in this model. So he would have to wait a year, come back, when is your term so You got the answer to that this question year. of like, which you Yes. Just yeah. so they, they could fill up their they, would, they could fill their term. Because wow. that was a question this morning. So they would they would have to, um, the question I didn't get answered, I think it's going to be further conversation, is what if we didn't get any applications? Yeah. How long does a seat empty? And so, mm. I don't know. I know that planning is having some conversations about some recommendations because they've got some longstanding people they need so to get. planning already has that. So it's a so planning and town counselors are already on, limited to a three year yeah. oh, gotcha. three term thing. Oh, okay. I didn't so realize. um so it's not like out of this realm, but yep. it was just a recommendation. Um, I think the the intent yep. was that if no one had applied and there was no pending applications, the person would continue to serve. Mm -hmm. But the problem that you brought up today, right. which we do need to address, right. is we can't just have someone randomly apply in July and then just kick off the, right. the that member that's supposed to be off uh, they've been on for seven months now that's so what, I, I agree yeah, that's that's yeah, inappropriate yeah um and i think that's where we're finding some flaws in it that right. we will figure out yeah my, but i mean also just we'll council have the ability to just say i'm ignoring this and we're putting you back on well i think appointment so i, I think that's why i think it's again my two cents yeah. just hearing some things i think i would love to see council table it for bring bring it back table their motion and let us mm -hmm. do a little digging into these answers because right. I've already got plans made for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, so you were the voice of reason. Yeah, yeah I know you when I come, come to citizen I'll, comment then. I know when you come to these meetings, you're the voice of reason. Yeah, I know that, that okay, I'm just going to take yeah. a deep breath. I already and know. Rick is going to start talking off. and my blood pressure is going to come down. <laughs> I'm just ready. Yeah. Anyway, but either way, more than just Rick in the sense of, I think that we need to go back and answer that question because it's what happens. Is it? You 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 fill it out and then okay we go because normal the normal process is terms end whatever year they do in December. Toady or whoever the clerk is at the time, I think it's October says, do you consider are you consider do you want to be reconsidered? Yeah. And you refill out your application, or sometimes people say, No, I'm all good. Thank you. I've served my time. The challenge is when someone says, I would like to keep going. Then we have this, and then it becomes vacant. So I think we need to figure out what that you know. Could you make that one that just be one year? 
so so if say Rick stays on because we have no one else, he can only serve. That term is for That's this how I've been on this committee. <laughs> Well, I guess the other side well, but you don't make it a full three years so that you there's another opportunity to have another candidate come in so you just make that similar to like an unfilled town council right. seat you you only serve for two years if someone leaves after one year right. so that yeah. filling person would only have a year and then you give another person an opportunity rather than having to wait another three years yeah. and does does it in our case does the alternate bump up to the I mean because that's all appointment committee thing does the alternate bump up to a voting member and the person goes we're not like we how does that all there's a lot there's a lot more strings to it i don't uh, think i want to be on appointments next year <laughs> or you don't get somebody that's qualified or fits the role you're looking for or you can use all the history 80, well, 80 well the one of reasons why one of the reasons why we went to nine members is to give the appointments committee a little more volume to say okay we've got some family members <laughs> we've got some, some moms some dads some people with history right you know what i mean and so if we're if we're if we're if there's somebody with history is leaving and we're putting a newbie which is great but it doesn't you fill the, the balance. Yeah. That's why I love this board. It's very balanced. Every time yeah. we filled the seat so far, yeah, it's been balanced. Yeah, Patricia, you know, came on, then we had Patricia with kids, and you know, yeah. Emily joined, and Ellen yeah. joined. We had, we yeah. we filled the dynamic we didn't have because we right. had a lot of people who've been on for decades. So right. I thought at least this board, through the appointments, has done a good job filling our seats. Mm -hmm. You know, so anyways, I think there's more to consider to not get into having to make some hard choices or change the rules quickly. So. Anyways. Well, we do have a vacancy. We do have one alternate. Oh, no. We Patricia do. was an alternate. No, Patricia yeah. was an alternate. She resigned. So as of last week or whenever she gave her resignation, we have our second alternate is our vacancy on this board as of right now. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. So we'll get one. The other, the other uh, uh, alternate. Amanda. 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 She's an alternate? Yeah, I think so. Right? Because there's she one. she move into the Patricia? Oh, Patricia was an alternate. alternate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One, two, three. Four, five. Alex is six. And Emily. Emily is seven. Yeah. So Amanda's first alternate, vacancy second alternate now. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, yes, I understand why it's there's a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. Um. So. So go. I, that's what I was going to say. If we, I know we're at the end of our agenda there quickly. Yeah, we are. We are, but, we didn't get to volunteer, but that's fine. And we you're going to let us know about October, yeah. and we've got November fourteenth. But go. But because I told him about, I was watching finance, so I gave him some. Oh, okay. Things. But Perfect. you give your update. Well, first I was going to say I wonder if this committee could one more time discuss at their next meeting possibly the dissolving of the senior committee and committing a spot to a senior spot on here. So at the appointments and negotiations, one of the conversations was we want to dissolve the senior committee because it's not active. Senior community what services? The, yeah, we have a senior advisory committee. A senior yeah. advisory yeah. committee. Yeah. Specific to community services. So yes. I think yes. the recommendation coming out of the rules and policy was, can we get maybe... I reappoint Rick. A spot. <laughs> Well, yeah, you can't say a slot reserved on this committee for yes. a senior. Yeah, so I, th I think we just want to be democratically. We just want to have a quick conversation with this committee, document it, and then go back to rules and policies and say we agree that we want to dissolve this and that we will create a position or we'll, we will always have a position for a senior on here. Yeah, why don't we say we'll always have a senior? Yeah. So wait a second. So does that expand the committee to eight, I don't, or does that mean like? We're full. no, I think it means designating maybe possibly changing the charge and designating a, a specific spot. Yeah, for a senior it down like an RA senior that's on here. Huh? Um, I mean, but the flip is you have appointments and you always you always tend to have a senior on there. But the question is, and I think maybe we need to have a discussion is should we should we codify it? Should we change the charge so we actually are saying we're dissolving this committee? But seniors, we acknowledge that you exist and you're part of our community and Clearly. you will have you will have a say and you'll be you have a seat on this. And yeah. so I think it would make the council more comfortable if there's just one more, I think, conversation about it. Um, because I think we're all like, do we dissolve it? Because you don't want to dissolve a senior committee. And then I know you have a very active senior community. Right. And we do have um Gail, our new senior program, has taken it over. So it's gonna start going again. But we do have a un I don't know if that's the right term, unappointed Scarborough age friendly community yeah. committee that anybody can join at any time that works with our senior programmer to work on projects. Well, can we, we just, can there they just we have a liaison? It. Can we just have a liaison? Do they have to be a designated? Yeah. Well, maybe if you have a committee, then maybe you could get someone that would be interested in being a liaison instead that's of- That's what I'm saying. Okay. Like, I we, think that dissolving that committee, right? Well, we, what you were saying? No, 
like we're dissolving the, the town board committee. That's a senior one. Todd has a very active senior community mm -hmm. that I'm saying maybe we could try to get. So why can't you dissolve the committee? Yep. It's inactive. Yep. We will commit to having a liaison from that committee. Mm -hmm. And I think we've said from day one, and it might be in the town council, that we try to have diversity yeah. on yeah. our yeah. committee membership. I, think that's yeah. good I had a conversation with Councillor Handel a couple of years ago when there was discussion about trying to merge. Right. Um, with the feelings that nice in concept, but this is why I joined this, not senior, right. and I'm sure some yeah. vice versa. Right. But there was no reason not to have a representation right. liaison. Yep. Right. Um, yep. Which would be more than welcome. Absolutely. And right. to piggyback that, when you're talking about designating a spot for a senior, and I'm sure you'll dance around this. <laughs> to me, that seems very age discriminatory yeah. or inappropriate yeah. Uh, yeah we're gonna have HR. Just a yeah, we get spot a for a someone in the high and then school. make for someone that theoretically has i'm kids. three years from being by designation of 55 plus right so, so you could be it i could be you know what i mean but again that's what is well i mean yeah i agree with you me is stronger what do you mean by an actor they don't so so that board so just quick yeah, history yeah. when there was no direct department doing senior program and they had i forget what it was called it was like it was a specific name wow wow yeah yeah wow oh, was the really? name. yes really the name. And, and it was a voluntary group that did senior programming they found place to do it they they raised fees and then it went under community service at some point and after a certain amount of time they hired a senior programmer who started working with that group and then as that group changed for whatever reason um we haven't been able to get people to serve so since i've been here i would say my first two years there was three really committed people that are no longer with us that have passed that were the backbone of that organization chair fundraising yeah. historian and then as we've gotten on in time less and less people have shown up covid really did did it in because we were doing things remotely and then yeah. trying to do trainings and it's never rebounded. This age friendly group is kind of populated up. And some of the things that they discussed to Art's point is when you're appointed, it feels like a big commitment to a senior sometimes. And um, to other seniors, well, you didn't want me, so I'm not going. So it's also that side of it. This other group is just show up when you can, bring your idea, join on a project when you want to join it's not something official through town hall it's nothing that's any sort of gail is the monetary person that brings requests to me so it's not a it's just a different feel it's just you know it's it's just different than being appointed and you didn't choose so me with respect to the municipal committee yeah are they meeting is it no, no they no. haven't met they haven't met in not probably a year um there might be a couple people. I mean, if you looked at the list, I couldn't so tell you who. Is the council primarily worried about the perception, perception yes. of disband? Yeah, just. With, yep. I, I think I, I we think should so. just absorb it into this committee. And I think that's I, why yeah. <laughs> the perception is. I would like... just absorb it. And if there are serving members that have met the attendance requirements that we have here and those sorts of things, Bring them in as alternates. My my term will open up in no. January. So this term will open. And then we'll have an all we have an alternate open spot anyway. I'm guessing it's right. Outdated, right. So that's but there's, there's seven people still listed on that. Committee. Yeah, but it, yeah, if I went through the name list, oh yeah, probably that's... one. It was the most active person that's having health issues now that probably wouldn't come back. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. so, so I and, and we already do a, the appointments committee does a good job of yeah. So, you know. Diversifying. Yes. We're, we're happy to. We're happy to have them. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Agree. And I realize you're asking me about the community center. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. So what I I I always watch the finance committee before that. And I was telling them that I was very excited, and you can chime in that the model you I, one I said you you stood up for the community center as always, um, but then two that the financial model ended up trying for them to see how it affected taxes and what that sort of right. stuff, which at least keeps it going. 
It does. No, yeah. so I mean, the scenario that yes. they were running, I don't know if you explained, was like if yeah. we put it on the June ballot. Yeah. And like, I mean, I think really the impact, we want to see what the impact is to the wallet. I, yep. I, 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 I think we're running through the scenario to show residents, I'm sorry, why we're not doing this now. I feel like that's yep. personally my, yep. like, I, I, I love that John's like, let's, let's yep. see if we want it on June. Yep. I think that's him being like, let's show everyone how awful this, I'm yep. sorry. Yep. I just, I'm concerned. I mean, yep. I, I don't know how else to get this movie forward. Yep. I think we're on the right track. I mean, we're going to run the numbers, see. I think I thought it was a win for us. And what we talked about when you before you got here was at our next meeting, we'll have a discussion about what those numbers because you'll have your next meeting right. in October. Yep. We don't meet again until November. So we'll get to kind of see what yes. the numbers were and then brainstorm if it's possible, how do we capitalize on it? Or if we need to come up with another strategy, we can do that. Right. They also talked about, and I said I would reaching out to UTL the consultant. Uh, Rick had a good yeah. idea is if yeah. there was a a 3D model of the community center as as depicted. Could we go to the ballot in November to sit as a tabler? You know, not so, on the ballot. Not on the ballot. Exactly. But sit outside. Outside. The yeah, election the, right. That's right. right. Yeah, just like any yeah. other group soliciting votes or gauntlet. We're all and, the, and, and, yeah. It has just, a, a 3D and the question people. I had for you was oh, yeah. the okay. community center that we designed yeah. would that fit on any of the three primary school lots um I would have to go back and look at the shape and the size and I could ask the consultant to do that to look at it um if I had to guess eight corners would probably be the only one I think that might be helpful for the next conversation because I hate that conversation yeah because I don't think I want I don't care what happens with three primary schools. I want a community center. I don't think they should. But that was brought up by Don Cushing tonight at the, at the meeting about, you know, well, how if we have a new school, we're eliminating three primary schools. Maybe we could put a community center. There. I, I don't like that conversation. I think we could use those primary schools yeah. significantly more costly. And so that. I think if we if I could at least say, I mean, I mean, it was like, I don't, is that even plausible? Right. Um, and so I think if I could eliminate that yeah, out was, of the conversation, that would be amazing. So I will ask that question. I'll ask about you too, about the model, and I'll ask them about that. Ooh. I did hear that conversation. I was doing a couple of things. We're listening. And again, I think the conversation went a little bit sideways because like we've got rooms and if we add a pool and we add a gym to that site, what if we don't have those answers, would they fit? That's, you know, oh, so the conversation after finance was all, the finance, the school committee finance director was there and yeah. she's like, those schools are done. She's like, you're leveling them. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and yeah. I don't, why would we want to put a preschool in, <laughs> in a school that's like dilapidated or a senior center? Yes. Um, in the minute you touch them, then you have to fix it. So I think, yeah. I was like, so I still can... add that to the mix. But if you do demolish them, yep. is it a possible site for a brand new community center? That we're well, the, that's the a valid only, question. The only feedback I gave was the big consistent between the committee was the location, and neither of those, yeah, any of exactly. those locations are not centrally right. located. Right. Agreed. Right. I did hear that. Point. Agreed. Yes. Do we know? I think you you must have an idea. What is the bond level that we can still maintain the A level? They're working on that. Yeah. That's good. That was conversation. That's what you're yeah. doing. That's all what's fine. No, well, I mean, the conversation we had today was we could, was we could finance a school and a community center, and it probably most likely would not affect our bond rating. That's what the town needs to know. Well, yes, but it well, would impact your pocketbook and your well, taxes. Of course, of right. 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 So we that's even right. had a discussion about this. We did talk about point. that. Like, we would hate to. You go through this, you keep it moving. When we say yes, we say, yep, we can put it on the ballot. And we go with $82 million. But in the back of your mind, in the town council's mind, well, we only want to raise taxes 2 or 3%. And what's our number? We don't want to go with $80 million. Well, we think we've got a consensus that people want the community center, but they don't want it at $80 million. They only want it at $50 million. And then we lose a whole year if it gets tossed out. Right. So is there a way that you, the town council, can communicate on this modeling, we think we can give you $50 million or whatever. Right. Just making that well, up. Think, so you only have to go once. Right. And I think that's the, the numbers we're running for the next scenario for next month are how much your taxes are going up. And that's what I think John Anderson is now saying is like, now we have to, we have to publicize that and say, what are, what are you comfortable with? Are you comfortable with your taxes going up the next couple of years for a community center? Right. Um, but we don't know what that is. Right. And when I explained it, the board again in the ad hoc committee, it took a year to kind of get to that yeah, point is know. that, you know, what $50 million would be, what would be, the, what would be inside of it? Right. 
what would the operation recovery rate yeah, be? Right. Because it's again, be if, different because if all of a sudden, if you, you know, yes, you may cut it from 80 to 50, but if you're having to pay another $200,000 a year in taxes because the recovery model is less, yeah. is that a win when you talked about a 30 year right. bond and that's 6 million, you know? So, so I think we can look at that once we see that number about what that looked like and then work that game backwards, mm -hmm. you know? Doing something. Yeah. Regards to location. Is anyone else looking at other locations of existing storefronts? When we lost Shaw's, I thought yeah, that was I the know, place. Yeah, for the exactly. Sport. Yeah. Or a community site. Right. Yeah, exactly. I thought the same thing with the Christmas tree shop. Right. It just moved so fast because we oh, talked about the, we talked on the school build committee about the the Shaw site. Yeah. The next morning, somebody was assigned to go look, look at it. Was yes. sold. Yeah. Same uh -huh. thing with across the street with the building the apartments. We said, oh my god, we've got mussy property. We could intense there and we could make a rectangle school. We maybe, went boom on a contract. Maybe Cabela's wow. might be looking to leave. We're putting a hotel in Cabela's parking lot. Really? Yep. Oh. Wow. Well, Who approves that? It's allowed under the. Oh, that was in the original plans. I mean, way back. But, anyways. Not to get sidetracked. Yes, yeah. I feel the same way. But are there any there other storefronts that would it be a potential home? To we need a commercial real estate to? agent. And I think that's what's tough is the recommendation came with a location recommendation, where I you I did question. I will continue to yep. question that location because I you wonder if it's cheaper to buy than to try to make that scenario right. work yeah right. a community center for a community right. center but the feedback was that it has to be close to the schools that is the feedback from the committee i personally have a different opinion yeah. um but i favor the black point one. Oh, you do it has well. plus yeah. i favor yeah. the black point you, just the one thing though so everybody knows is that the, the, the good thing about that site is not the site itself but because they had to be a lot of clearing in the back and a lot of grubbing. Um, that model, those costs would be pretty true if you took it and you put it in, you know, next to the animal veterinary two roads over, or right. black pot would be even cheaper right. because you don't have to grub as much. Where's black, the black Kingston? By St. Max baseball field, that church. At that baseball field. Yeah. So the, the model was Not just the baseball a, field. But behind, no, no, the, the, the football. Park. Practice, yes, yes. The park. right. Yeah. So that model was designed with some site cost built into it to do the grubbing and yeah. deal with wetlands. Yeah. So if you did say, okay, we'd like it, but we wanted a black point, the town could pick it up and move it, and those costs are already built in right. for life. So, so it's transferable, I would say. They were very thoughtful on that. So, but anyhow, um, I just want to say Penny did have one comment in there. Please include holidays when we talk about, oh, uh, because last year, um, How is that different? The Fourth of July fell on a, on a Wednesday, and it was fifteen dollars. <laughs> uh, oh, so we lost again. We lost all of it. It's the only one we average. Yeah. So it's Fourth of July, Labor Day, and Memorial Day don't count. Well, it depends on what day of the week they get. Well, they're but they're, those are ones we should consider. Yeah. So it's Memorial yeah. Day. It's yeah. three of them, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is just a procedural question. Well, actually. Do we have any? It's a separate question. Um, do are there any other? We so have about next... three minutes for a time out of Zoom. Okay. <laughs> so uh, our next meeting is November fourteenth. Wrap up. I will send out the Google sheet for the beach fees. We will also talk. You'll update us on October. Yes. And we'll um, yep. discuss that at our November meeting. Any other? Can I have a motion to adjourn? Move the meeting? to adjourn. All so those in favor. Say... Thank you. All right. Let me end this before you start. Yeah.